The Northland is an amazing place, and we're hitting the road to show off your town. Today, the spotlight's on the Grand Rapids area. Your town starts now. Welcome to Lake Country. We are taking our show on the road again for the third trip in our Your Town Summer Series. Today we're broadcasting from the beautiful Grand Rapids area in Itasca County, and we are so excited to show you everything it has to offer. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Kendall Jarbo. And I'm Rob Coles. Welcome to Itasca County. What a beautiful place to be in. We've got a lot to show you today. And we'll take you on a tour of some of the area's hidden gems. And we'll introduce you to the owner of a small family-run resort and see the incredible amount of work it takes to keep it running. All that and a whole lot more coming up in this special Your Town broadcast. But first, we want to give you a little introduction to the Grand Rapids area. In case you're not super familiar, the city of Grand Rapids itself is right on the Mississippi River, which helped it become a major logging town. That industry allowed employers like the Blanded Paper Mill to open in 1902. Over time, businesses like that helped the area grow. And while this area is home to many, it's also a vacation destination for thousands every year. And you might be wondering where we're broadcasting from right now. We are at the beautiful Sugar Lake Lodge in Cohasset. It's a family-run business that's been in this area for years. It offers a taste of the outdoors through golf, pickleball, tons of lake activities, and a pool. Abby Oxborough is the owner and general manager. Her family built and opened the resort in 1993. She says it's their intimate feel that keeps both guests and staff coming back. The best part of the job is the interactions. Um, we have such good connections. Our staff is incredible. They've been returning for four or five years at a time. So they get to know everybody. It's just such a, it's a different environment. It's so welcoming in such a community. And of course, a big thanks to the Sugar Lake Lodge for hosting us tonight. Rob, there is certainly so much fun to be had in these shows today. We're super excited. But let's take a look back at the studio where we find our Ryan Half, who has today's top stories. Thank you, Robin Kendall. Turning to our news on the national stage, emergency managers in Hawaii are defending their decision not to activate warning sirens during last week's devastating and deadly fires. The head of Maui's emergency management agency said if he would have triggered those sirens, his team was afraid people would evacuate to a town that was actually experiencing fires. Officials also feared that because school was out, many of the victims yet to be found could very well be children. Rescuers estimate more than a thousand people are still missing at this time with 111 people now dead. And to our north, a total of 236 fires have been actively burning across the northwest territories of Canada. Officials are calling it a crisis situation. They have issued evacuation orders and declared a state of emergency as the fires threaten the capital city of Yellowknife. The state of emergency will allow leaders there to help bring in more resources. And because of those fires, the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency has issued an air quality alert for the majority of Minnesotans covering today and tomorrow. Those areas in orange here are unhealthy for moderate groups, with yellow being moderate. The winds will also bring more smoke into our area tomorrow. And Jesse Carr with the Minnesota Department of Health says there are still a lot of unknowns that scientists are tackling when it comes to this unhealthy air. That's why the Pollution Control Agency has, you know, invested so much in their forecasting and we are, you know, trying to be more proactive around these alerts. So there's so much we don't know and when we don't know, it's really best to um, act with caution. To help those sensitive groups, Carr says wearing an N95 mask can help trap some of those particles. Those are today's top stories. Let's send it back out to the Grand Rapids area where meteorologist Hunter McCullough has a look at today's weather. Hunter, I have been informed that you are on a boat delivering the forecast. How's the lake life treating you? <laughs> I sure am, and as we sp oh, we just had a fish on the line, but it's uh, it, it, it got off here. But we're trying to catch a few fish out here. Ryan, I don't envy you at all uh, being back in the studio, you and Kevin back there. So, oh, we got one. All right, let's see here. This is Jeff Johnson, by the way, with Northern Drift Outfitters, and we are on the walleye right now, folks. Dan is going to be fishing here at 5 o'clock, so our goal is to outfish Dan. Uh, that's going to be kind of our goal here. One. We're not going to lose this one. Yeah, here we go. How does it feel right now, Jeff? It feels good. Okay, all right. All right, we might just skip weather here and uh, take a look at this fish that we're about to get here. Hopefully a nice nice walleye here. Let's take a look. I'm going to have to net this one. I'm going to have to net it? Okay, oh, let me... Oh, we got a pike. Oh, we got a pike. Let's go. Where's that net at? I'll grab one. Okay, okay. It's just not hooking, so... 
Beautiful. Look at that. That's some action, live action right here, folks. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> They you get, gotta love fights. Yeah, you gotta love. They're aggressive. They're the best kind of fish to catch. Look at that. Already some action on these waters here. Again, this is Jeff Johnson. This is with, uh, he's with Northern Drift Outfitters. Very nice northern right there. So we've got plenty more with weather coming up here in just a little bit. I promise. Promise we'll get to some weather here in just a little bit. But uh, for now, I'm going to toss it back here to Rob and Kendall. Rob and Kendall, quite a bit of action going on here. You can see the northern right there. And uh, we're having a lot of fun already on the boat here. So it's going to get a lot more fun here as we head throughout the day here, Rob and Kendall. Hunter, I love how it was your goal to catch a fish live on air, and you literally just did that already. We just started. I blow it away. Right away. I blow it away. By it's that. checked off. It's checked off the box. It's already checked. We're good to go. Wrap it up. We're out of here. Just incredible. Well, we will check in with you for the weather in just a few minutes. But like we mentioned, right now we are at the Sugar Lake Lodge in Cohasset, but just next door is Grand Rapids. Yeah, and the city, that's the city that is a junction of some major highways, such as U.S. Highway 2, which runs west toward Bemidji and east toward Duluth. Now that means a lot of traffic filters through downtown and an eye-catching site right off the highway is the historic Central School. Built in 1895, the three-story building was a school for nearly 80 years. It was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1977 and was restored in the 80s. Now it's a multi-tenant location for commerce and community events. And the Yellow Brick Road just so happens to run along Pokegama Avenue. Founded in 1975, the Judy Garland Museum in Grand Rapids is home to a collection of items from The Wizard of Oz, including the original carriage featured in the movie. On the grounds, you'll also find Judy's 1920s restored home and the Children's Discovery Museum. And we're told on average 25,000 people visit the museum every single year. And while you might have already heard of some of these places before, this area has so many unique attractions. Here's an up-close look at Itasca County and some of its hidden gems. Itasca County, located in the heart of northern Minnesota, is rich in history and recreation. I met up with Melissa Barr, president of the Grand Rapids Area Chamber of Commerce, for the ultimate tour. What a great place to be and a beautiful day to be here. So I thought we'd take our first stop would be up at the Rife Center. Uh, as you leave Grand Rapids going up 38, there's the Grand Rapids High School and we have a beautiful art center that's attached at the high school and there are a lot of activities year round that happen there. To the Rife we go. The Performing Arts Center features live music, theater and dance. All of these posters are shows we have coming up cool. here this fall and we do a variety. Every kind of genre of music, we do theater, we do family shows. The Rife's executive director, Chantel Dow, showed us all the bells and whistles, like their smaller studio theater, then the Wilcox Theater, which seats 700 and is bustling with youngsters practicing for their summer production. There's a scene shop and a dance wing, makeup area, dressing rooms, and all the costumes you could possibly imagine. We have little, <laughs> I know I saw goblin kind of. <laughs> A state-of-the-art <laughs> facility with tons of ways to be involved in the arts. Next, we visit the edge of the wilderness, which just so happens to be at the start of State Highway 38 in Grand Rapids. This is the edge of the wilderness road. So it starts here, and there's four of these markers all the way to Effie. Just shy of 50 miles long, loggers once used the route through the Chippewa National Forest. A majority has been reconstructed and offers everything from kayaking and snowshoeing to skiing and eating. You start here on the Mississippi oh, yeah, River. Yeah, and then you just take 38 up and there are, you will just see lakes and lakes and lakes and lakes and lakes. Speaking of outdoor activities, just a short drive to the west will put you at Tioga Recreation Area in Cohasset with million dollar views and excursions galore. Mountain bike trails huge and they go all through the woods and the forest. The former iron ore mining site now features trails that twist through the landscape bringing visitors from all over. And there's kayakers that come down in here and paddle boarding and then there's just swimmers who just love because it's a beautiful lake and it's clean and it's such a gem. 
our tour would not be complete without checking out some of the amazing art installations right along the Mississippi River. Sculptures pay tribute to the land and water, and these sunflower solar panels sure do make a statement. Murals adorn the sides of businesses, including the local coffee shop. There's a lot of art to be seen throughout Grand Rapids. Whether you enjoy pieces of art or the performing arts, outdoor recreation or scenic drives, there's something for everyone year round in this slice of northern Minnesota. Now, Rob, this just scratches the surface yeah. of all the really cool things to see and do in the area. And if you stop by the Chamber of Commerce on 3rd Street, they will be happy to give you a list of things to explore. And of course, we have this all listed on our website, too. Yeah, there's definitely no shortage of things to do here. So stick with us because after the break, we're going to be talking about some of the best food the area has to offer. Welcome back to the Sugar Lake Lodge in Cohasset, where we are broadcasting from live today. Rob, it is just gorgeous out here. Beautiful. It really is. Now, Kendall, lakeshores across the Grand Rapids area are dotted with resorts of all sizes, from big facilities like this one to smaller operations. But running a business is no easy task. Kurt Christofferson and his family own the Pacagama Lake Resort. Their facility includes a four-bedroom lodge, plus individual cabins, boat rentals, a sandy beach, and more. Christofferson has worked worked as a plumbing wholesaler in the Twin Cities for the past 35 years. He's planning to spend his retirement running the resort. And I love the interaction with people. So this is kind of the best of both worlds. I get to live on a lake, hunt, fish, snowmobile, golf, and still mingle with all the different guests every year. And Christofferson recently purchased six more cabins and has plans to expand the operation. And the very best food in a community can often be found in the least glamorous of places, and that's the case in Grand Rapids. Pasties Plus is right off Highway 2, sharing a small old building with a barber shop. Inside, owner Ruth Padley and her staff of two have been cooking up pasties. The delicacy is a pastry filled with meat or veggies. She launched the shop with her father, a miner himself, back in the 90s. Ruth kept it going after his passing, and just like her father, she prefers to keep it simple. Definitely. We don't do a lot of advertising or anything. It's mostly word of mouth, but we're busy enough. You know, there's only a couple of us, and we're still making them from scratch, so... She's made more than a million pasties since the shop opened. And coming up at 6.30, a look at how incredibly old school Ruth keeps it and how she also likes to keep the mood light. Now, Rob, I've never had a pasty myself. I have not either. I think we should either get a bunch and bring them back to the station or yeah. get a bunch and eat them before we get back to the station There we tonight. go, I think so. <laughs> we might have to delicious. do a poll and see who's had them and who hasn't. Yeah. Well, after the break, we're gonna check back in with meteorologist Hunter McCullough. He might catch another fish, he might not, but he definitely will give us a check of the weather. Welcome back, folks. We are live out here in Grand Rapids. We already caught a fish for riding the high here of uh, catching that northern pike here just a little bit ago. That was so cool. Jeff Johnson, my gosh, you had some uh, fantastic fishing skills there. And, uh, a little luck. Yeah, a little luck yeah. right there. Yeah, I mean, that was, it was perfect timing. I mean, I was just about to do some weather, and we're going to get some weather here in just a little bit here, I promise. But we, uh, not, nothing like the action of uh, getting a pike or a walleye in the boat, am I right? Yeah, they're all good fighting fish, and... You know, the Grand Rapids area fisheries are full of them, and uh, every level of angler skill level can get out here and have a lot of fun in a given day. Can you talk about the work that you do kind of with the area fisheries here in Grand Rapids in this area? Yeah, so, you know, our local fisheries men and women do an amazing job um, keeping our lakes healthy and uh, full of fish so everybody can come out and have success. And they pick our brains once in a while and want to know uh, what we're seeing on lakes and um, I think that's helpful to them, and uh, they're doing a great job. Okay, and Jeff Johnson here with Northern Drift Outfitters, and uh, obviously his fishing speaks for itself, but you said you haven't caught a pike out here in a long time because it's not really a pike lake, right? Yeah, so we're out on Sugar Lake here, and uh, the lake is full of walleyes. Um, usually uh, can come out here in the afternoons and catch quite a few of them, so 
Uh, we might see one yet. Ah, there we go. That's that's our goal here. We're gonna find one. We're really uh, we're jigging pretty hard here, and hopefully we can get a walleye here coming up pretty soon. But it's he already had a couple bites already too. Um, but talk a little bit about it's kind of the dog days of summer, the late season fishing, and traditionally it's been kind of uh, the walleye are hard to get at this time of year. Uh, and you uh, is it kind of changing here as the years have been going on? Well, I think I think this summer we had such a uh, early summer stayed cold and our water temps are just finally getting up to where they need to be and um, you know the summer bite in the Grand Rapids area if you can find the right weeds you can get on good fish and um, it's just taken a while this year for everything to kind of get going and we're seeing the whole ecosystem in some of these lakes up in those 13 to 15 foot weed areas and uh, makes for a fun day. It really does. It's been a beautiful day so far here. And Jeff, thank you very much for joining us. Hopefully, we're gonna. Our goal is to get a fish here in the next three minutes. It's a tough, tall order, but we're gonna try to get one here. So it'll be interesting to see. Thanks yeah, for joining us. Absolutely. All right. So as far as the weather today, like I promise, we're gonna get to some weather here. Although I don't really want to. I want to keep fishing. But we have some beautiful temperatures out there right now. These temperatures sitting into the 70s. Currently 69 on top of the hill here in Duluth. 66 over there into Ely. 68 into Hayward. And we also have. The this air quality warning that's in effect here over into uh, Minnesota lasting through Friday evening. It's going to be lasting a little bit longer in northwest Wisconsin. So heading into today and tomorrow, expecting to be into the orange, which is over into uh, the unhealthy for sensitive groups. And that's including here in Duluth and over into northwest Wisconsin. So if you are folks with pre-existing conditions, uh, those folks with asthma, anything like that, just keep that in mind. You might have some challenges as we head into the weekend. The updated drought monitor just came out today it does not include the rain that we saw yesterday so you can see unfortunately that exceptional drought has spread a little bit more along the south shore so hopefully that can kind of stave off here uh, from this recent rain we'll have to see what happens in a week here but we have high pressure that's kind of parked right around the area here and that's bringing us the sunny skies eventually we have some more southerly flow southwesterly flow that's going to bring some more humid conditions we've been talking about this warm and humid air mass that's going to be moving in here into our Saturday afternoon and then we head into Sunday and you can see high pressure kind of rolls back in here seeing some clouds later on in the day but the bulk of Sunday partly cloudy to mostly clear so that's some good news temperatures here into the future we're gonna be seeing temperatures into our Friday getting to the mid to upper 70s maybe a couple 80s down to our south but then we head into the rest of the forecast for our Saturday now add 10 degrees to what we saw on Friday now some areas approaching the 90s especially to the southwest Pine City Aiken Brainerd those are the best chances for seeing the 90s but here in Duluth likely in the upper 80s I'm going with a high of 87 into our Saturday afternoon speaking of the full forecast you can see on Saturday a high of 87 degrees 79 on Sunday partly cloudy skies mostly cloudy on Monday a slight chance for some showers 75 degrees and 79 into our Tuesday so kind of cooling off a little bit after that uh, kind of hot day on Saturday good day to get outside go on the water do some fishing look at that transition now we're out here uh, catching these walleyes and catching these northerns and all right Dan uh, we are uh, we're up to one northern so beat that when you go out here at five o'clock we'll have to see what happens me and Dan in a little bit of a competition but uh, we'll see what happens when he comes out here at 5 o'clock. Tune in to NBC. But we'll be back here again uh, at 6 and 6.30. And it's just been a blast out here. And, Jeff, again, just thank you so much for hanging out with us out here and letting us have a blast out here. Yeah, thank you, guys. For sure. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back to beautiful Itasca County. We are just having a gorgeous day by the lake. And we're also learning about the timber industry, which has been linked to Northeast Minnesota for more than a century. Yeah, a local attraction in Grand Rapids is offering an up close look at the life of a logger from years ago. Now the Forest History Center created a replica of a logging camp from the year 1900. The camp includes a bunkhouse, cook shack, and a barn. Now according to site manager Pete Mall said the workers were logging white pine at this time it was one of the most in-demand building materials in the country if you visit the replica camp you can hear the stories of the northwoods lumberjacks told by costumed guides i stopped by for a closer look in addition to giving people a chance to step back into history the center gives attendees a chance to experience life in a logging camp hands-on
And according to staff at the History Center, loggers were paid about a dollar per day. Lodging was free and meals were provided. Now, in addition, the logging camp also offers kayaking, a horse-drawn trolley, a fire tower, and a visitor center. So, Rob, we saw you in the video there. How was the sawing experience? It was. I learned an important lesson. You only saw when you pull. You're not supposed to push. Okay. So that's what I know. It's going to help me if I ever cut down my own Christmas tree <laughs> down the line. If you ever want a career change exactly. or something. Yeah. It was a hard work, though. It looked kind of difficult. Oh, it looked very, very yeah. difficult. Yeah. 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 All right. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back to our special Your Town broadcast. It has been so much fun getting to know the Grand Rapids area. And the fun is just getting started over at the fairgrounds. The Itasca County Fair is celebrating 130 years. The milestone event began yesterday with a flag racing and stock car races. The rest of the fair, uh, the fair which runs through Sunday, features live music, more races, and a bike giveaway. The local 4-H will be supervising the children's barnyard, and there will be more than 2,000 animal classes competing for best in show. Lots of great ways to get to know the area. Hunter, I can't believe you caught a fish. It was amazing. It was amazing. Now, technically, I didn't catch it. So it was it was Jeff <laughs> who did all the work. It was fantastic. He nailed that northern. And me and Dan have been having some uh, little trash talk off air here. So I'll have to tune in at 5 and see what Dan does. But uh, probably not going to be too impressive. We'll see what happens well, here. A lot of pressure on Dan Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. He's going to do fine. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again later.